to a live and free march. My name is Toby and I'm really pleased to welcome you here tonight. Tonight Nicola is going to be continuing our series on the Psalms by speaking to us about Psalm 63. Uh, now back in January I challenged us all to work on having a still heart and mind. Now I don't know how that's going for you, uh, but for me it's not going that great. Uh, it really doesn't feel like I've made any progress at all. Um, and you know what, I think that's fine. I think it's something that takes years to learn, not just two months. But I thought that tonight we could have a go at stilling our minds together. Just to take some time out to focus on God. To let his spirit fill us. And to prepare ourselves to hear his word tonight. So, if you're doing anything at the same time as watching this, I'd like you to stop and make yourself comfortable, to close your eyes, don't worry, I'm going to blank the screen, you won't miss anything. Perhaps you'd like to open your palms face upwards as a sign of openness, and we're just going to spend a couple of minutes quietly in God's presence. But first let's pray. Lord, we ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit now. We ask that your peace, the peace that passes all understanding, quiets our minds that we may better hear you. Amen. Uh, now perhaps right now you're feeling quite tired or stressed or overwhelmed. Jesus said, come to me all you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Let yourself rest with Jesus tonight. Let go of those things that are stressing you out even if it's just for the next half an hour. Let Jesus give you rest. Perhaps you're hurting tonight. In Psalm 147 it says, He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wound. Let God see to your hurts tonight. Know that he cares and he will personally bind your wounds. Perhaps right now you're feeling fearful or anxious. God says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed. Perhaps right now you are feeling fearful or anxious. God says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Let God take your fears. Put the anxiousness out of your mind. Lord, you are the Prince of Peace. Our lives are so often stormy, especially at the moment, with so much going on. But Lord, you can calm the storms. And we would ask that you calm our storms tonight. Amen. We're going to have a minute or two of silence now. Feel free to pray, but remember that prayer is a two-way thing. Be open to what God might want to say to you tonight. Let's give him space to speak to us now. Perhaps if you're unsure on how to do this, you could just think over the, the verse from one of the Psalms, which is, Be still and know that I am God. So just take a minute to know that he is God.
hope that you found that time useful. We're now going to have a song from our Alive and Free Band. Feel free to carry on praying if you'd like. Feel free to join in and sing along, or just reflect on the words if you want to. surrounding me let it break and your name still call the sea to still the region me to still every wave and your name peace bring it all the peace the storm surrounding me psalm for today is psalm 63 O god you are my god i seek you my soul thirsts for you 
my flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory, because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live, I will lift up my hands and call on your name. My soul is satisfied with a rich feast, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips when I think of you on my bed, and meditate on you in the watches of the night. For you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I sing for joy. My soul clings for you, your right hand upholds me. But those who seek to destroy my life shall go down into the depths of the earth. They shall be given over to the power of the sword. They shall be prey for jackals. But the king shall rejoice in God. All who swear by him shall exult, for the mouths of liars will be stopped. As one season moves into another, there are signs of spring around us. Those signs of flowers that have been bursting through the ground bring us so much joy. They give us a reason to smile. And yet there are other seasons in our lives as well. And this has been a painful season. The past year has been a, a tough one for so many reasons. And with those signs of restrictions beginning to ease, I'm under no illusion that this painful season is far from over. I've seen too many families who've experienced pain and personal loss in the past year. And like most people, I long for a hug from a friend or two, as well as family members. I look forward to the day that we can stand side by side with others in church, where we can sing praises to God together in the same place. But I know that that process to get there will not be pain free and it won't be quick. It's been the seemingly little things which have moved me emotionally. It's been the things that I've taken for granted previously that I simply cannot take for granted anymore. None of us are the people that we were this time last year. But we couldn't say that in 2020 either because we weren't the people that we were in 2019. Life moves us forwards, but we don't move alone. God walks with us every single step, preparing us, guiding us and picking us up when we fall flat on our faces. Or even picking us up with a little stumble. I'm not sure how you found life since January, since the beginning of that latest lockdown. But a couple of weeks ago, I was speaking to a very good friend about how things have felt differently in this lockdown, especially compared to the one from March last year. I described how I was feeling, but also how a lot of other people had used this word to describe how they felt. I used the phrase weary. And when I was thinking and praying about which psalm to reflect on today, I felt three things were important. Not to lose the sight of the season that we're in, because this is Lent. To know how important lament is in our life to recognise that we're weary and to also remember where our hope comes from. And so Psalm 63 seemed to be perfect. It's one of David's Psalms and he describes it as being written in a time when he was in the wilderness of Judah. It was probably written when David was seeking refuge during Absalom's rebellion, which we find written about in, in 2 Samuel chapters 15 to 18. When we think about a desert place, we picture them as being barren and places of isolation where not much happens. But the desert is a place of life, a place where there is growth. And it's also the place that our ability to survive can be tested. But most important, where we grow in our desire to rely on God. David was hiding. He longed for a friend who he could trust in order to ease the loneliness he was experiencing. And so he cries out to God. Oh God, my soul thirsts for you in a dry and weary land. Obviously, David is speaking of the surrounding environment. But as I said a few minutes ago, I use the phrase weary to describe how so many people are feeling. 
There's also a dryness, a sense of being parched, as well as a need to rest. I remember as the first lockdown began, I hoped for normality after Easter. Then I hoped for it by the summer holidays and then by Christmas. And as each month passed, I longed for that refreshment and for that re restoration. The desert is a lonely place and loneliness has been something only too real for many people who've spent so much of the past year in self-isolation. And even in the middle of a house full of people, we can feel quite lonely. We might find ourselves missing being in contact with a wider group of people on a regular basis. As an extrovert, I found it tough. And even a few introverts that I know are longing to see people to get out and about again. But here in this desert place, especially during Lent, we look at Jesus' own experience of the desert place. We recall the temptations that he faced and the way he handled them. And we should remember that it was from this place of isolation and reflection that Jesus then went out and began his ministry among people. At this point in our pandemic experience, we're now seeing light at the end of the tunnel. We're seeing a future beyond our lockdown experience. And so surely we can't fail to see that God will be doing a new thing, a place of refreshment, a place of hope and of revival. But this might also be a long process of rehabilitation. And for some, it will be filled with pain and loss especially as they revisit the thoughts of the past year. As we begin to think about coming out of lockdown, we might envisage ourselves returning to do things exactly as we did them before. But the reality will possibly be different. We'll probably find that we're in fact a bit nervous about doing some of the things that we used to do without even giving them a second thought. We might find ourselves in the middle of a crowd feeling nervous or even a cough that we hear nearby might make us twitch a little or it may be that we feel ready to go straight back to doing everything but that our friends or our family might not be quite as ready as us and the question of course is whether that return to normality will be safe we've all become a little institutionalized we all need time to heal, to regain our strength and our emotional and physical as well as spiritual strength. So if you find that idea of unlocking, of coming out of lockdown actually makes you feel apprehensive, then be gentle with yourself. Don't rush it and try not to rush anyone else. Take time to listen to your own feelings and to one another. Take time to listen to God as he guides us. Many people are coming out of this lockdown bereaved, impoverished, depressed, broken. It's not all going to be magically over in June. Paul's letter to the Colossians chapter 3 verse 12 says, Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience and we need to acknowledge that lament for the things that we've lost as well as the mistakes that have been made will be crucial to healing lament in the bible is filled with passion this psalm begins with an acknowledgement of being thirsty but it speaks of the true source of satisfaction for that thirst and rather than getting stuck in the depths of despair Verse 1 says, in the morning I'm weary and thirsty. And verse 6, at night, the satisfied soul. In other words, God is there throughout the day. We know that God gives us hope. We know we're sustained by his love and our joy is not dependent on our circumstances. Verse 4, the one right in the middle of being thirsty and being satisfied tells us to Bless God for as long as we live, to lift our hands and call on his name. It doesn't say, bless God when it's all over. Bless God in the middle of it. 
the final three verses of the psalm appear to be a little bit disconnected. But when we look again once at the context in which it was written with David hiding from Absalom, we hear he's heartbroken of the death of his son. He reaffirms that God is a God of justice and he, that we will be held accountable to him for our actions. In the same way that Paul speaks of judgment in Romans chapter 3, every mouth will be silenced and the whole world held accountable to God. As I spent time with this psalm, I was struck at how many emotions are reflected in these few verses. How God's our help in our times of in our times of light and darkness. How we to sing when we're in the shadow of His wings. That God is undeniably holding on to us as we hold on to Him. But as we hold on to Him, we need to remember our desire for His presence, for His provision, and for His protection. Our desire is for God to fully satisfy us and shouldn't be dependent on where we are physically, emotionally or spiritually. God is with us and our souls, they will be satisfied with the richest of foods, as verse 5 says. So why wouldn't we want to sing of the goodness of God? Whether we're taking our first steps in following Jesus or whether we've been following him for a lifetime, Above all else, we need to remember why Jesus came and lived among us, why he died for us, why he rose again from the dead. And that reason was because he loved us. A covenant love, a knowledge that we are loved and cared for by God 24-7. We are God's chosen people. So we need to spend time with him and ask him what he's preparing us for. We need to be open to him and to what he wants to do through each one of us. We need to ask him to reveal what he wants to show us, what he wants to show you about who God is in you, to show me who God is in me. And then we need to spend time listening to him. But mostly we need to spend time thanking him for all he's done he continues to do and what he plans to do in our future the psalm is exciting this psalm is filled with hope a hope for our future that even if we are feeling weary and worn out that god is with us in the middle of it let us pray Lord, as we take steps into the unknown of the every days of our lives, enable us to walk in your way. Give us a vision of the path that you want us to take and the courage to step out in faith as we place our trust completely in you. Fill us with a desire to worship and praise you every single moment of the day, to sing of your love in every circumstance of our lives. Lord, give us that vision. Bring healing where the healing is needed. Bring restoration where that's needed. And to bring revival in our lives and in our communities. In Jesus' name, Amen.